verse 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. So the church age here, see this? I don't know if you can see the picture, but if not, if you see something purple, then the church is separate from all these people here, the saved and lost people here, right? The church is a separate saved people over here. But these people, they're not being judged according to their works. What they are is that they join, they join God in the judgment. And what they are is that these people are the jury. They're the jury who helps God out in judging these people here. You might say, wow, what an honor. That's right. What an honor. What a privilege to have. Yeah. We have 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. No, uh, Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the what? Wow, see, everyone from all time, world, saved and lost, these church age saints will judge them. How about that? So you're going to be jury here. So your job here is being jury. Satan, he's the accuser. Revelation chapter 12, we read that. And God is the judge. Revelation chapter 20. All right, look at, keep reading verse two. And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge what? Angels, so we're gonna be judging angels too. Go back to Revelation 20. Revelation 20. Wow. Think about it. Uh, do you remember Genesis chapter six? The sons of God, the angels, they mingled with the humans, right? So then God sent a huge amount of water and drowned out those angels, those sons of God. So then they died and they went to hell. So these fallen angels who are underneath the current body of water from Noah's flood, all the way to the bottom of hell, they come up to be judged. Didn't you know that? Look at this. Look at this. Look at verse 13. And the what? Sea gave up the what? Dead which were in it. Dead is coming up out of the sea here. See, the fallen angels were drowned out by the waters and the seas of, from Noah's blood, and they're underneath it in hell. They come up to be judged, and that's why the church judges what? Angels. Wow. How about that? We're judging them. Now, look at the context here. The context is the dead coming up out of hell. Keep reading. The sea gave up the dead which were in it, so the dead, the dead come up out of the sea to be judged. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. See that? So the grave, death, hell itself is delivering up these lost, these lost people, these lost beings, to be judged. They delivered up the dead which were in them, in death and hell. And they were judged every man according to their works. So their works, 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 are being judged. Christians, we're not judged according to our works, amen? We are judged according to our faith in Jesus Christ. That's why we join the judgment and, jo and join God in judging these people's works. So the salvation of these people were different from our time. Now, let's look at Jonah 2. Jonah 2. Jonah chapter 2. Now, think about it. What's the lowest parts of our world that will be the closest to hell? It's the bottom of the sea, so to speak, right? The bottom of the sea. That's why it makes sense that the sea is connected to hell. Because that's the closest location that you're going to reach to the depths of hell. Now, the interesting thing is that the lowest, uh, the lowest elevation for a landmass, so to speak, or the lowest elevation on this earth, is actually what is called, what is very interestingly called the Dead Sea. Now, Revelation 20 said, the sea, sea gave up the what? Dead. 
My, 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 ain't it an interesting name they gave to the lowest elevation on the earth? The lower you go, the closer you are to hell, right? And you should study the Dead Sea. Very interesting stuff about the Dead Sea. How about it? Hey, hey. Well, let's look at how the sea is connected to hell here. Let's look at Jonah 2. Verse 2. Jonah says, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the what? Belly of hell cried I. So he's in the belly of hell. But look at this, verse 3, for thou hast cast me into the deep in the midst of the what? Seas. Wow. Now look at this. He Look how much lower and lower he's going. He's going from sea all the way to hell. Look how low he's going. Keep reading. Midst of the seas, verse 3, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the what? Soul. Now it's got going from something physical to something spiritual now. See, he's getting deeper and deeper from waters to something lower now to a spiritual plane. The spiritual plane he's entering is hell. Keep reading. The death closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the what? Mountains. The earth with her what? Bars was about me. Look at that. He's in the center of the earth now. He's at the bottom of the mountain. And the earth with the bars was about him. He's surrounded by the bars of the earth. He See, he's in the center of the earth. Wait a minute. The earth with her bars. The gates of what? Hell. The book of Matthew. Gates of hell, right? All about that. Jesus said, like Jonah was three days and three nights. He used the typology of Jonah, right? As Jonah was three days and three nights, Jesus says, so shall the Son of Man be three days, three nights in the where? Heart. See, center of the earth. Wow, 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 wow. See, so notice over here that Jonah, he went from the sea down to hell. So that's why in Revelation 20, there's a connection here. The lower you go down to the sea, you'll reach eventually hell. And by the way, scientists to this day are still wondering about what kind of creatures are in the bottom of the sea. There's... It is said that 90% of the world's creatures are unexplored and they're in the ocean. My, my, my. All right. How about that? All right, go back to Revelation 20. What a book, man. What a book. What a book. All right, Revelation chapter 20. We'll read verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. So now death and hell, they go inside the lake of fire. And this is called what? The second death. Now, here's something important to understand. These people, they're going to say over here that uh, the lake of fire is separate from hell. That's what you're going to hear some Jehovah Witnesses and probably Seventh-day Adventists saying. Oh, well, hell is separate from the lake of fire. It's not the same. Hell, they think, is the grave, okay? So they think that death or the grave, that hell is equated with that one. And that the lake of fire is not hell. Well, hey, you read that verse. Death and hell was what? Cast into what? The lake of fire. Well, you know what they will do? They'll say Hades at verse 14. Death and Hades. They won't say death and hell. How you can simply argue is this. You can't escape fire. It's just cast into the lake of fire. So whether you call hell, Hades, or the grave, it don't matter. It's going to have fire either way. 
So that's an important argument that you will know, that you will need to know. It's called what? The second death. Why? Because when we say you die, you die, you die, what do we mean? The body dies. That's the death of the body, first death. But the death of a soul, second death, that's right here. And that's an eternal death, eternal dying of the soul. See? So that doesn't mean you're annihilated and poof. You're burning forever. How do we know that? Because we read that in Revelation 20, verse 10. That lake of fire is eternal. You're conscious. You're burning forever. If you compare that with 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says that the last enemy is death. So praise the Lord. Satan, he'll be cast out and judged. And then that grim reaper will be cast out and judged as well. If there's a powerful force that the elitist and the richest, most powerful globalists would want to escape is to live forever and is to not die. And that's how powerful this creature is, death. If you look at uh, famous uh, movies, fantasy, sci-fi shows, one of the pinnacle villains that they'll put is a grim reaper figure or a death figure. That's what they put in comics and movies. That's how powerful this being is. But the Lord is the only most ultimate powerful being that can judge this entity over here. And that's death. Right. He is the last enemy defeated at 1 Corinthians 15. All right. Uh, verse 15. Let's close it. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life. See anybody's name that's not found written here in the book of life? Was what? Cast into the lake of fire. They go here. All right. So review. Revelation 2 and 3 which was a doctrinal reference to the tribulation, they can get their names wiped out of the book of life if they don't overcome, if they don't serve him. Why? Because Revelation 20 says it's a judgment of works. Why? Because it's pretty obvious. To resist persecution of the Antichrist in hell itself, that's going to take a lot of work. That's going to take a lot of work. You're going to be starving to death without the mark of the beast in your right hand or in your forehead. And then they're going to try, make, try to make you renounce, uh, renounce your belief, your walk in Jesus Christ. And they cannot do that. So it's a lot of work in the tribulation. And if you don't think so, then you, you try it out. You're just, uh, how well are you in your works and living for Jesus? The world don't have to put a gun on your head to make you, to make you not serve God. You're already doing that right now. So over here, they're getting judged for the works. Whereas the Christian church... We're not in this great white throne judgment. We already went through our judgment seat of Christ that ended at Revelation 19. We act up as jury to judge these people at the great white throne judgment. And our names are written in the book of life. That cannot, where we are sealed all the way to the day of redemption, the Bible okay. says. And no matter how many times we sin, the Bible says we're still sealed. That's truly salvation by faith, not by works, which is why Paul said that all over. It's not by works, not by works, not by works, faith. Whereas here you see works. And then the unbelievers who refuse to believe and who their salvation fail in their works, then in this great white throne judgment, their name is not written in the book of life. And the Bible, all 66 books will be laid out from Genesis to Revelation, opened up. And then when they give an argument, God will quote chapter and verse right in front of that atheist, that intellectual, the Catholic, the Muslim, the Buddhist, and all religions and all beliefs of all time will quote chapter and verse and judge them, knowing their secrets, and then he will cast them to that lake of fire. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Mm -hmm. Revelation 21 is eternity. Yeah. We're going to have some fun. Mm -hmm.